Hey guys, Shards here from Legacy Division. Back with another or re I'm just joking, it's Nadio. Hey guys, so <sighs> it's been a while. <laughs> I've been really busy recently. A whole lot of school stuff plus CWLL base building and just a lot of stuff in general. But finally I'm here for my first real video. And today I'm gonna be showing off some of the designs that I use on my town hall eight. I've still got a Perma 8, but I don't really play it that often. So starting off with the first one, the approach I took here was really more of like an anti valve type base. Here we are utilizing single bombs um, near wizard towers, and these are pretty deadly. Although in some locations I think they could be spaced a little bit farther out, because you want to force the heal really early. But this base, it was less of an anti hog and more of an anti belt anti-Goku type base. And with bowlers recently, I'm not sure how it performed, but a couple weeks ago it was doing pretty good. But if we notice, we have three kind of medium to small size compartments, and here we have an AD, an elixir collector, next to an archer tower and a gold mine. So the idea behind this is that Valks want to hit, Valks want to sit between buildings where they can hit multiple things at once. So they'd sit between the air defense and the elixir collector, and then where would they run? They would run directly down and to the right, towards the archer tower and the gold mine, and they would hit that double spring. And so it's really hard to get Valks to hit springs unless you're using like a spring base, which I'll show in a minute. But this method, it's not, it's not necessarily as effective, but it, I think it certainly works pretty well. And with the trash trenches, my custom trash trenches, it seems to perform pretty well. And the springs also are effective against hogs. As far as anti-dragon goes, I mean, centralized CC, I've got a whole lot of really small buildings for them to work through. Funneling might be kind of tough on the sides. I mean, it depends, because where you're hitting it is really, like, that's really going to affect, like, what's going on in the game, <laughs> for lack of a better term. You might notice that I use some pathing, like, over towards the left side. They might think that they could send in loons or hogs or something and get to the AD pretty easily, but actually the defenses are pathing away from the air defense. To try to keep it, to the, like to try to keep the loons away, and we do have wizard towers near there to help defend against um, clan castle loons or hogs or something coming in behind the dragons. Um, kind of central trap placements, and the dragons will be working through kind of high hit point and really weird pathing type stuff, and there are seekers near the ADs, so. That should help them if needed. So here I really went for like kind of all out, not all out, but mainly anti-dragon with a bit of anti-valk and quite a bit of anti-hog stuff. So I'd say really the main anti-hog feature is the double springs and the singles. Well, the one single bomb. In addition to this really well hidden double bomb right here. That's nearly always going to pass to like between the Tesla and the sweeper. And what is really nice here is that it's kind of this area of high hit point stuff. It's got a Tesla and it's got like really high hit point stuff, right? And it allows, now if they're coming down from top right, they're going to be working against two air defenses at once. And if they zap this one to the far left over here, that could be kind of annoying. But if you look at how many archer towers are left, not only do we have <clears throat> tough pathing to get loons into the air defenses, but also there's a whole lot of really little buildings, and this is a major anti-dragon thing at Town Hall 8. It's not just about really high hit point structures, it's also about lots of little little buildings, because as we know, dragons can be slow, and recently with the update, their initial breath speed was increased, so that kind of, that kind of not quite nullifies, but that, that makes it a little bit harder to defend. But what all these little structures do, and with like the little offset stuff, that makes it really hard for dragons, even under a rage, 
to get through it all really fast because they've got to be moving around, they've got to be retargeting, and then as they're like about to be firing on these air defenses, they've still got high hit point stuff around it. As they're about to be firing on the air defenses, CC is going to pull. And then in addition to that, we've still got one, two, three, four, five air targeting things behind heavy hit point structures, such as the stuff with the clan castle and the resources, and then archer towers and peasants and all sorts of stuff. As far as anti valve goes, I mean, the, the big dead zone area in the middle really helps, and I mean, quad quake is really only going to open up a certain amount. And because of the pathing, it's going to be hard to get in there and get certain objectives taken out, such as that double bomb there. But back to the thing about the clustered buildings versus anti-dragons. So this is, in my opinion, it can certainly be better if you're trying to defend against rage dragons, because, I mean, if they're hitting a storage, you've got two dragons on a storage and they're raged, they're going to tear through that pretty quick. Even if you've got like three storages and they've got six or seven dragons on that, they're going to tear through that pretty quick under rage. Because we, we all know what rage dragons do. But if there's a whole lot of little buildings that are kind of tough pathing, kind of nasty to get through, it's going to be quite harder to actually get them in there and have stuff to be effective. Um, for anti-hog, well no, I already kind of mentioned that, but it's just kind of your usual anti-hog stuff. Double springs, double bomb, kind of kill zone areas. I mean, really the anti-hog, the really, really the best bases I've got for anti-hog are coming up a little bit later. Alright, so here's the third base. This is another base I designed on my own, and it's a spring base. So, this type of base is really hard to hit with hogs, but it can be a bit susceptible to Goho, Govaho, or like just maybe even a straight up max spell. So, not, we're forcing the hogs through six different spring locations. And then there's a central double bomb, and there's all sorts of traps and all sorts of really nasty stuff to get through. Now, these days at Town Hall 8, I think a double bomb by itself still kills level 4 hogs, even under a heal. So they certainly will go down. As far as anti-dragon, I mean, there's just, there's a ton of trash everywhere, and it's just really nasty to look at. It's one of those really nasty passing bases, you really don't want to mess with that much. I mean, it's, it's kind of a pleasurable base to look at from a defensive standpoint, but from an attacker, you know, I wouldn't really want to get too much. Um, Anti-Valk type stuff, I mean, you can really force the Valks through the springs, usually. Um, central damage, kind of. Central bombs and stuff. Um, a kind of trash trench location over here on the bottom right. Just kind of like scattered trash, hard pathing, hard funneling. Really hard to get stuff clear and actually get in. Um, for, yeah, I think that pretty much covers it for this piece. This base is held up pretty well under testing. And I'll just say this real quick. I was with Enraged 8, or Elite 8. I stopped by there every once in a while just to say hi and test some new bases. So if you're wondering, like, oh, does he really know what he's talking about? That type of thing. Does he really, like, are these bases actually really tested? Yes, they have been tested. Yes, they hold up well. Um, now for our next base. Fourth base. This was another base designed by me. I know it looks a little bit similar to one from the forums because it uses that kind of same three-way double giant bomb, which I'll talk about in a minute. Other in addition to the clan castle and the bar. As far as anti-dragon goes, if they're trying to come from the bottom, they've got sweeper, they got a whole bunch of traps, they got a central Tesla farm, and they've got that dead zone that's gonna split up their dragons. It's gonna be really tough on them. Like splitting up your dragons and not having them go where you want, that's really tough, because usually they'll drop a rage right around that dead zone. And it'll kinda help their dragons a bit. But they're gonna get split up and split off and go out to the sides and go away from the air defense because of the way everything's lined up. 
like over here on the left, by the bottom left air defense. If they're hitting that archer tower, they'll next switch to the elixir storage, and then they'll pack down to the builder. And then what will happen is they'll get drawn away by other crash, and they'll work their way through before finally coming back into the cave. And then they've still got like one or three. Sorry, my cat's being bad. I'll be right back. Anyways, sorry for that. Um, yeah, they've still got a whole lot of backside defenses. So, like, even with the zap quake, I mean, I don't know. I mean, maybe it's been a while since I actually did a whole bunch of town holy tunneling with drags and all that. But this certainly did work pretty well back in the days. anti valve I mean, the core is not quakeable. Yeah. The core is not quakeable, so you can't reach from that middle wizard tower, the wall next to it, all the way down to the bottom right air defense, the wall next to that, and open everything. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but as far as anti-hog goes, the... I mean, the pathing is a big thing. Like, kind of leading stuff inwards, um, leading stuff away from main targets, splitting stuff up, um, double springs, that type of thing. And then, of course, that three-way double giant bomb. So if you notice, if they're coming from the bottom Tesla, they're going to head either to the top right Tesla or to the top left Tesla. And they will trigger both bombs at once because the bombs have the large enough range that they will hit the hogs going through. If they come from the right to either the bottom or the top left Tesla, what's going to happen is it's the same angle, same thing. Um, coming from that top left Tesla down, they will trigger both of those bombs because they're going to be coming towards the two Teslas that are standing, and they will hit both of those bombs. It's similar to the path in the second base, or both will trigger, and you can't feel it through. After braving through a whole lot of recording and audio problems, I can finally hear it for the last space. But sorry for the overall. Audio quality. It wasn't really well planned out. I just had to be able to talk about it. Anyways, here for the last base. This is actually an enraged 8 base. It's a spring base. Um, works really well against hogs because of the spring traps, obviously. I mean, that's where it gets its name. Um, the double bomb, the single, the six little bombs. It, I don't know. I mean, you kind of have to use it in order to see how well it works. Um, but it works well against hogs. It's kind of work against. It's kind of weak against Goho, or like a Govaho, because most defenses are targetable by wizards. So, I mean, while there is that, um, it will chew through hogs, pretty much. <laughs> like they'll be pretty much wrecked. Um, dragons pathing is really annoying. It's, I mean, high damage, high hit point stuff, all sorts of stuff. Um, but. I mean, that's really about it for this base, but I hope you enjoyed the video. Again, sorry for the poor quality. It was kind of recorded all at once. I've been really busy. I had a AP study session yesterday morning, but um, that's it for this video. See you next time.